So this story was posted on LeetCode and it was just posted pretty recently as well, um, 2020. And if anyone knows who this person is, please reach out and you know, I would like to thank this person for sharing their story. Um, it was posted by an anonymous user. So at a high level, this person had two and a half years of a two and a half years as a full stack software engineer, unrelated engineering degree from a top 10 engineering school. So this person was a self-taught dev. So that's really interesting. That's very impressive coming from a, so that was really impressive coming from a, admittedly it's a top 10 engineering school, but being able to teach yourself how to code and then finding a job as a software engineer, I think that's very, very hard and it's very admirable. So it shows that this person has a lot of grit, a lot of determination, and definitely really smart as well, being able to teach himself how to code and also landing a job as a full, uh, software engineer. I like the, the high level of preparation here. High level of preparation here. So the bulk of my preparation was doing leak code style questions on leak code and other places. Did a total of 150 problems. The breakdown there is about 60 easy, 80 medium, and 10 hard. I also completed the U Udemy course, mastered the coding interview for system design. I mainly watched YouTube videos. And lastly, I also spent a good 15 to 20 hours just thinking back and writing out in great detail my top six most successful projects. So what I really like there is that this person spent a lot of time, like this person definitely did it the right way. They first broke down the problems by difficulty. So they tackle a good mix of six, so they tackle a good mix of easy, medium and hard level problems. Um, ideally, you don't wanna jump into hard or medium right away. You wanna spend some time on the easy level problems just to get the rust off and slowly build up your confidence. And you want to spend majority of your time on medium level questions, because I think that's most representative of what you would see in a technical coding interview and doing some of the heart level problems. I think it, it just challenges you and really forces you to kind of apply and, and make sure that you understand, you know, data structures, algorithms at a much uh, deeper level. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that they spent time uh, doing system design preparation because for two and a half years of experience, um, I would imagine you'd get asked a lot of more basic questions like, you know, how would you design Instagram, right, from scratch. Um, but they wouldn't ask you distributed systems, depending, well, depending on your experience, but generally for two and a half years of experience, I wouldn't expect uh, people to get asked on those types of questions. The turning point. I was initially trying to go through all of the materials above while holding both my full-time and part-time job. Wow. So this person had both a full-time and a part-time job. That's kind of a little bit crazy because I usually don't see that many software engineers doing that. And I mean, kudos to them for being able to balance and juggle between a full-time and a part-time job. Once I started getting interviews with big name companies, I became much more stressed because I knew that not having a CS background put me at a disadvantage which means I needed a lot more time to prepare. Watching this video from Nick White was the main turning point. Yeah, I really like Nick White as well. I think he, I think his channel is really, really good. He mentioned that he was able to do one well interviews for Google and Uber because he studied all day, every day for a month straight. The next day I put in my two week notice and my full-time job, which gave me about two and a half weeks to study full time. Um, I think this is an interesting point. Um, Number one, I think it's definitely a disadvantage for yourself if you have to juggle multiple things at the same time, because, you know, being a full time anything, not just a software engineer, but full time anything, it means that you're spending eight to nine hours a day at your regular work and whatever time you have left after work, that's dinner, you know, workout, time with family and what have you, that doesn't leave you that much time to prepare for a coding interview. Um, I think kudos to this person being able to, you know, identify what their high level focus are and jumping into that and, you know, dedicating their entire like two and a half weeks of time, just solely on preparing for coding interviews. I think for anyone um, who's, who's watching this, it's important to understand that, you know, what your high level priorities are. If you think that coding and, you know, preparing for technical interviews for a job at, 
you know, a fan company is your highest level level is is your highest priority, then go for it. Of course, if you didn't have that runway, if you didn't have that much time or ability. Now, of course, if you did, if you feel that you don't have the ability to just, you know, put everything down, put all your work down and just focus on technical interviews for two weeks to a month, then you have to find a way to balance that. Typically, what I find useful is spend more time on the weekends, you know, maybe four or five, six hours on the weekends, and then maybe try to spend two hours on a weekday um, for coding prep. Lead code strategy. I made a list of all the core data structures and algorithms that were recommended for study in the Google Facebook prep materials. These are, for example, strings, arrays, tre trees, linked lists, stacks, queues. Then I simply bounce around and did problems from each area, starting with easy and then moving on only to medium. Okay. Yeah, again, you know, that's a great strategy, I think. Uh, usually big tech companies, they will give you a prep material, so maybe like a, a Google Sheet or like a PDF that says what are some areas they're gonna quiz you on, and they will specifically give you resources to study up on those as well. And I particularly like this person, like obviously this person is very, very smart. Like the way that they tackle the, the problem here is that they look at all the core data structures and algorithms that they need to learn, and then broke it down by sections so that they could you know, focus on just those individual sections and starting from easy, not jumping into medium or hard right away, but starting from the easiest level to make sure that they have a strong understanding of what those things are. Again, if I were recommending this for anyone, you know, I think this is definitely the, the approach that I would recommend for a lot of people. Start easy, understand what are the different sections or areas of knowledge that you need to know. And then the only thing I might add here is you want to have a good understanding of how much you know right now and how much, what are some of, some of the gaps that you need to cover. Now, the only thing I would recommend here is that you want to be really honest with yourself and rate yourself from one to five, where five is you're very, very comfortable, you know exactly what those data structures are, and one is you haven't really heard of it, right? So you wanna make sure that you are very honest with yourself, rate yourself, and then make sure that you're getting to at least a four or a five, ideally, on all of those core data structure areas. In regards to my approach to individual problems, if I was completely stumped, I would give myself an hour or two to come up with a brute force solution. Once I solved it, I will look at the solutions in the discussion and compare my solution. If my answer was weaker, then I would clear up my code and try again later. I think I think this person, um, I think this approach here is, it's going to consume a lot of time. It's going to consume more time than if you were to, you know, do sort of this breath first approach where you cover as many different problems as possible before trying to think of a more optimized or ideal solution. Um, but I really like this, this, this approach here as well because it focuses more on really understanding and trying to maximize your learning from doing those problems. I've seen some students, for example, who try to memorize the answers and not really understanding the core of the problems themselves, which leads to a situation where you see some people who have done hundreds, if not thousands of lead code questions, but still not being able to explain them in the context of an interview. The reason that happens is if you memorize answers and not understand how the solution works, you're never going to be able to adapt to a slight variation in those interview questions. So I think this is great. Spend time just to make sure you really understand what the problems are and what are the patterns involved in there. I think that's going, ultimately, I think that's going to help you the most in terms of preparation. So now we get into the interview experiences. I think this person interviewed with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I think this person interviewed with seven companies. Oh no. So 
So this person interviewed with 16 companies and I think they received offers from all seven of them, I think.